Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow woodworkers. For anyone new members here tonight, my name is uh, Calvin Perry. Tonight we're going to continue our journey on the exploration of wood joinery, an in-depth look at wood joints. So this is my second session, and last time, last time we did the butt joint, and as we learned, it's probably the easiest joint to do but at the same time the least attractive and most likely the weakest. So some of you may say tonight you're a pain in the butt but that's not true that's tax pain you're experiencing. It's that time of the year. I did receive a number of positive uh, feedback on the last presentation and I do appreciate that very much. Uh, we all need some encouragement as we, get, as, we, as we go along. Most of us are not experts, and we're all learning together. So tonight we're going to talk about the rabbit joint. Now this is a graduation or an improvement on the butt joint. I'm going to begin by showing a video. And this uh, video was produced by a gentleman by the name of Alex Mosier. Of course, there are many, many videos on this subject. And this one is fairly simple and basic. It's all done only by using hand tools. And I think uh, we need to recognize that not everyone in the group has power tools, as some of us do. So, but as you view this video tonight, I want you to be uh, thinking uh, how this can be done by means of uh, a table saw or a router. Now, sure, some of you have experienced uh, doing it these ways and uh, at the end of the session if you've used a router or a table saw to do, do this kind of type of joint we'd encourage you to uh, maybe speak up and uh, we can have some discussion on it. So after the video I will take a few moments to elaborate a little more on the rabbit joint. So for anyone watching this on the, uh, on the electronically on the computer uh, at this time you need to please uh, uh, stop the video. Stop the video, and uh, and uh, we'll go to a link. So I'm, we're going to show a video that will be a link on the computer, and uh, then re return to the presentation. So at this time, Tom, I'd like you to uh, show the video. It's going to be simple and basic, <laughs> and that it was for sure. But my goal was to uh, so you just see how a rabbit joint is, what it looks like, and how it's made. I'm thinking we will probably never forget how it's done. The video actually showed what we call a standard rabbit joint. And I have a couple more examples here tonight. And uh, I actually made one myself today. And I used a table saw. So this is a standard, as it was shown in the video, you got the uh, standard rabbit joint. And the, uh, as we see, we have a, a good side. Then we have the uh, side with the ends that's uh, shown a bit here, so like this. So, so this is a standard rabbit joint, and uh, but we can graduate from that to a better one, and you can have a locked rabbit joint. So you see the difference there? Can you get that okay? Zoom right in on it. So I just want to get my this. So this is a, a lock rabbit joint. This is made by uh, using a router bit. Now, I know some of you folks back there are experts on router bits and using the router. Has anyone ever used uh, this particular router bit to make a yeah to make a rabbit joint? And uh, so that makes it a much stronger joint. And uh, Okay, so I have another one. 
This is what they call a stopped rabbit joint. I can see how it's cut. It's cut uh, just partially along the side, and then it comes to a stop. I guess that's why it's called a stopped rabbit joint. Now, I don't know what the application would be for a joint like this, but uh, I know the other one previous would be, would be many applications for it. And uh, the, uh, the lock one I actually made as well. I'm going to show you that first. This, okay, I'm going to show another one here. So this is the, the lock one, like, okay, like this, goes together. Just tip it, tip it, yeah, lay it on the tip of it. That's not, there we go, there, hey, that's good. Yes, I did do this one with the table saw. And uh, the important thing about this one, uh, okay, so you will always want this to be to, to face because this is where the strength is. So when you when you pull this, yeah, you're pulling this along, now if you, you did it this way, you pull, like you might be able to just uh, pulling them apart. So the strength is more this way. But then you're not hiding that ingredient. Right, you're not. And then this would be more like for a drawer facing, for example. You probably put a facing. Like a veneer cover? Uh, yeah. Across the front of it, yes, that type of thing. So that'd be one application for it. <coughs> but this would make for a fairly strong uh, joint. So this is. Uh, Rabbit joints. So, uh, does anyone have any comments at all on this type of joint you want to come, talk about tonight? Yes, man. Why, why, did you, why did you make that type of joint? Well, well, last time we talked about a butt joint. And, and we found it weak and we've come apart. And But this, I think you would use it for mainly for drawers. And, uh, and it's, it's much stronger. It's more for strength. Yes, you put the glue in there, so you have a very strong joint. That would be my answer. Anybody else have an answer to that? Keeps the drawer from separating. Keeps the drawer from separating, okay, yes. Would you still use screws on that? Probably not. <laughs> uh, a lot of people would use uh, like pin nails, you know, like a... Just a small brad brad nails, yes. Probably brad nails to hold it together. So Paul, this is an improvement over what you were talking last week, right? <laughs> okay. Well that's all I have to say about rabbit joints, if nobody has any more comments. And uh and I'm sorry, in a couple of weeks we're gonna talk about pocket hole. We're gonna do that one. And uh so thank you for your, attend or your, for your attention and being a good audience.